the idea behind this is not only to describe what I did with some of mine, but perhaps to give people some ideas and tips if they're thinking of upgrading or detailing some of the coaching tools. At this point, uh, it's kind of tribute time that many of us have drawn inspiration from those who might call our modeling heroes. Uh, some of mine, John Boyle, who back in the 80s produced a line of its brass kits for the Caledonian, and very ingenious and detailed they were. Uh, Jim Smiley, who carries on the tradition with Cali coaches and gives me personal service. Anything I want to buy, he brings round, which is rather good. But also got to mention our Meg Talbot, particularly over the last couple of years, Davey, Keith, and others who've contributed and kept things alive and given us yeah, a weekly high spot. A lot of my heroes, John Payton, who has helped me over the years, he's in the Caledonian Railway Association and he is very free with his help and advice on anything to do with Caledonian coaches. Mike Williams, who produced a go-to book on Caledonian coaches. And uh, Steve Parsons, uh, a gentleman that I came across on RM Web, who goes under the pen name of London Tram. And although he describes himself as a bodger, he's actually a very skilled modeler. And a lot of what I'm going to say you know, derives from Steve Parsons' work. Well, you might wonder why bother converting coaches. Well, John Boyle's decent model stock is no longer available. John was an engineering and modeling genius, but not the most commercially aware gentleman. And although the, uh, the master still probably exists, no one is exactly sure where. Jim Smiley's Cali coaches deals with larger coaches. He's done the Grampian 65 foot stock, the 57 foot semi corridor stock, and also the preserved coaches that are currently at Bonet. Now, when I was working on the 57 foot coaches up in my loft layout, I allowed for clearances, I thought, for the longest and widest coaches, but that was an error, foolish mortal. The 57 foot coaches just would not go around, so I needed something smaller. I could have gone to the Worldly Works because they have kind of scratch built aids, the, the, the coaches there. And I've also got some ways of former London Northwestern stock and West Coast joint stock, which gets catered down to the London Northwestern and the Cali. However, the bulk of Cali coaches, uh, of Caledonian coaches, were 45 and 48 foot stock from the Macintosh era. And these lasted up until the middle of late 30s. So if anyone's modeling LMS in the West Scotland, you'd probably have to use some of these as well. Okay, the starting point, uh, the Hornby coaches. There's the third florestry and the composite as the brand. What we're going to, uh, here's a selection on the dining table, is where we are going. And it's an interesting journey. Check your sources first. This is Mike Williams' book, and you can see on the right-hand lower picture the modern preserved stock, which is longer and wider. But on the left, under first and third, is the ubiquitous Cali 45 or 48 foot non-corridor stock, which is what I was aiming to produce. In the book, you get all sorts of plans and other details. The, com the composite coaches are a real devil because of the uneven spacing of the compartments. You can see that in the upper diagram. The lower diagram, however, is a much easier fix with the brake curve. In terms of tools, this might sound daunting, but you're looking back at 50 years of modeling experience moving back. One tool I didn't have when I started this was a razor saw and a miter saw. And if you're doing any kind of cut and shut, on a plastic model, these are absolutely go-to tools. Craft knife, steel roll, absolutely. Drill bits and a pin vise, especially if you're using very small or fine drills, and if you're drilling into metal or particularly white metal. The speed of a power drill will actually melt the uh, white metal and fuse your drill into it. Better experience speaking there, guys. 
It's soldering iron and keep it away from the plastic, but you do need it because there are certain things that need to be robust when you're doing three grouping in stock. They are footery and non streamlined things with lots of little extra footery bits sticking out. I bought a whole range of plastic card about 10 years ago from a firm called Expo, and it gives you various thicknesses and various opacity. It gives you the standard white, it gives you black, and it also gives you clear, which is great for things like windows. It cost about 20 quid then. I don't know what it would cost now. Microstrip from Slaters, again, when you're doing rain strips and that kind of detailing work, good stuff. Ratio do seating sections if you're going to detail the interior coaches. And willow foot for infill is good. I prefer this fine, super fine, but don't keep it too long. Mine's is about seven years old now, and it's starting to get very hard. You have to work quite hard to soften it up before you can mix. Brass wire of various thicknesses from about point four up to point, uh, one mil. These you can get from Eileen's Emporium, which is one of the things I've missed not going to exhibition, that the traders who come round are absolutely wonderful people and they stock all the little footry things that uh, you can't only otherwise get when they love. A bending jig, if you're going to bend wire, well, very useful. There's Bill Bedford does a couple and they're marked off in very small uh, gradations. And if you're making footry things like grab rails for coaches, these are invaluable. Brass strip, I found, was the answer to the running board. I tried plastic card, I tried plastic card laminated with very thin brass strip, but the only thing that really did the job was the whole brass strip itself. For roof fittings, that's things like ventilators and lamps. You can get them either through railway associations or from model shops like 51L. Uh, they also do things like brass coach handles, which are good for you know, upgrading your store. I used Hornby wheel sets because the original clients are very good indeed, and the improvement in running quality with the Hornby wheel is nice and good. In terms of paints, I used for the main color Vauxhall satin vest, which is actually a pearlescent paint, but if you put on some uh, dull varnish or matte varnish or even satin varnish, it comes out really nicely indeed. And of course, the aerosols are good for when you're sliding transfers into place as well. Super glue, yes, the usual. <laughs> if you're using epoxy too fast, I would certainly recommend the quick set. Uh, leaving things to set overnight is just a pain in the gender part. I use Rebel Contactor for the fine plastic work because the long nozzle enables you to reach parts that you can't otherwise. But also, you can put out very small amounts of it. And Fox Transfers very kindly actually ran me off a custom built set of transfers for me. Thanks to them. Right, for every coach, what you're going to have to upgrade are the door handles and grab rails. The grab rails varied very much from company to company. And one of the things that gave stock its identity was the team. Uh, brass door handles, but nothing else looks quite like real brass. So I think it's an upgrade worth doing. Running boards and three grouping stock are quite distinctive. They just don't look right without them. The roofs, obviously, having to, to adjust the clarity, cut them down uh, and make them curve. It, it's a wee bit of work, but it, it's definitely worthwhile. I like to put interiors and coaching because you know the compartments were part of the, of the interior of the coach, and I think it does improve your appearance. Right, first steps first, the underframe. And as I said, after experimenting with various options, I found that the lift-in pull-out uh, underframe worked far better with the brass strip for the running board. In terms of the roof, well, and there's a bit of surgery involved there. With a circular mini saw, you need to cut out the clerestory bits, and you can also cut out the roof of the clerestory as well. Trim off the lights, and you can use the 
remaining bit to insert into the gap because the curvature is almost the same. Fix it with solvent and it's off to go. Fill in the gap with plastic art is the other option, but then you will have to insert a nut because the courses are held together by a long screw that affixes through the base of the course. Again, Milupat, fill it in, leave it overnight. It, it's lovely stuff to work with. You can you know, dampen it and smooth it out. And once it's dry, you can sand it down. Inevitably, you will have gaps, you know, however careful you are. And some quick setting horny filler will plug those quite well. The outer roof, you'll never get the loop like entirely flat, and it's quite obvious from the roof that it needs to be. Some very thin plastic art will do the job beautifully. 0.2 mil, cut it to shape and size, and then with a card jig, meant a mark in the positions of the ventilators and lamps. I wouldn't drill yet because of the effect of the curve. It's better doing the drilling once you've made the marking on the roof. Fix the outer roof then with super glue and be very careful. You don't get many chances to get this right. And of course, inevitably, sooner or later, your fingers will become attached, you know, finger sticking away. Use contact data to fix the, the main strip using micro strip. I would start in the middle, I found that the best way, and then gently curve them to the edge and then cut off the top. Once that's dry, drill your ventilator holes, insert them, glue them, and then paint. Now, most regrouping stock, the roof was an off white, which tended to weather to grey. If you're looking for a felt effect, you could, before you drill the ventilators, et cetera, put, you know, cover it in plastic solvent and put on a thin tissue, leave that to dry, and then trim. That is difficult. It works fine enough for wagons, but the large expanse of source groups, I think you're taking a chance. The alternative, if you really want a uh, felt effect, is to spray from about two feet above rather than 18 inches. And by that time, the uh, paint is starting to gather into slightly larger globules, and you will get a slight ripple effect to simulate. If you're doing this kind of thing, don't be too ambitious to start with. The 45 foot stock, all you have to do there is trim off the handles and grab rails and then add some running board. You don't have to do any cutting of it. There's another shot of the running board in place. Uh, I make up complete sections to just drop in. You need to leave holes for the fixing screws and locators. And there you can see the, the roofs. A couple there have been done. The one underneath is with the clerestory roof reinserted and then glued in place, strengthened with another foot. And you can see the fixing hole uh, just in the center here. If you put in plastic guard, you will have to use a brass nut. I think it's about uh, an ATA if you're doing that kind of thing. And then the painting. Uh, using rattler cans, the box will satin made. The paneling actually isn't as hard to do as you would imagine. I use the John Boyle technique, is where you get some very dilute white paint and simply drop it into the panels, and capillary action will allow it to spread. And once you've got the right amount in, the whole panel will be covered and it will be easy. You don't have to basically worry your head about getting the line right. The, the paint will actually do that for you. The only thing is you might have to do it twice or haven't helped you three times because the paint is quite dilute and it will stick uh, in the first instance to the edges rather than the middle. But it's not a hard job. Um, practice obviously on some older stock that you're not too bothered about. But being acrylic, if it doesn't work, you can simply wash it off and start again. What you will have to do is let the acrylic dry. It will take longer than acrylic normally does because it is dilute. So again, probably work in a batch if you're going to do this kind of thing. I masked the bogies, having painted them black. I didn't mask the sole bar, which I'll just fill in later with black. 
And then, hey ho, once you're ready to go, you insert the brass handles, the grab rails that you've made with your bill bed or stick, and your transfer. Varnish or not. And then, of course, you can paint the wheels, the, the Cali had them, the tires, with, and then you're good to go. Once you feel a bit more ambitious, you can do things like the chariot end. I inherited a couple of in uh, the edge brass ones from a John Boyle kit. What you have to do there is to cut the end compartment and reverse it, and then put in a new end. These were basically half compartments with a toilet behind, so that the first class passengers could actually get a view. Uh, I don't know about the economics of it, they only held three people. But if you're traveling first class, you did have access to a toilet. And there's the rest of the coach there, a new end put in, and you can see the HB screw in the room. Batch production is the best way to do these kind of things because you have to build in a fair amount of drying time. So when you're spray painting, you need to be able to go away and do something else while you're waiting for that to dry. And likewise, when you're dropping in paint into the panels, once you get your eye in, you're as well doing four or five, let them dry, turn them over, and then do the other. So the easy stuff, the, the 45 foot uh, stove, the first class, Use a chisel or some kind of sharp knife to take off the grab rails and door handles. Drill holes, probably using a tin vise. Reform the roof and then add the running boards to the bogies. Add the running boards to the chassis under frame. And I found the best way to do that was to solder the wires that were holding it, solder brass wire, because plastic is just not strong enough for that kind of thing. Replace the wheels uh, and paint the tires. It's not a hard job to paint the tires. It looks harder than it is. But what you do is basically hold the paintbrush steady and rotate the wheel. And again, if you're using acrylic, if you make a mistake, you wipe it off and start again. Respray the body, and of course, the usual caveats about you know good ventilation and remembering to mask the stuff you don't want to do. And drop in the panel paint and off you go. You've got. You know, a model that eventually I think you, you could be quite proud of. The transfers, again, are the last detail that makes these things come to life. You can get them off the net from Fox or the HMRS as well. They do some nice tips. Varnish or not, it's up to you. <laughs> there are tales of varnishing going sadly wrong. Okay, now the hard stuff, the 48 foot fell. Now, that is the Triang original, and here is a butcher version. What you have to do, because the Triang coach has five compartments, you really need to cut five off one of these and three off another, cut and shut, and then put in a strong base into the bottom uh, to make the thing rigid, and then fill in the gaps with Miller butt and let it say well. Again, the roof is a slightly different length, so I don't know if you can see that it's been cut here and here to lengthen slightly. So that makes it a 48 foot, eight compartment in coach rather than a 45 foot, seven compartment. Ready for painting, and you can see the components there. You can see the brass rod here at the very bottom and the brass wire to hold uh, the, the fixing screw, and then the HBA nut there. Brake thirds, a wee bit easier, uh, but again, the Cali didn't <laughs> uh, copy the, the Great Western. It had a six compartment uh, brake third, and the guard's ducat was at the end. So again, copious cutting and shutting to get to that situation. I was also lucky to pick up some 45 foot brake there, Dick John Boyle from Alba Models, who is based in Linlithgow and spent life in Norway. But the Hornby coaches use, uh, serve as useful donors for these, basically cut out the sides, lengthen them slightly, or cut them shorter as, as you wish, 
and then stupid glue the fake thing in. There you go. They didn't come with garb ducats, so I had to use one of the old ones. Full break is a mixture of a couple of hornbiers and some other ends there. I think those are probably ratio midlands to fill in the gaps there. And another job for the paint shop. And you can see I super glue the, the plastic to the, the, the bag quite well. And every so often, recheck your sources, make sure you're on course. And there's our 50 foot break and the other full break, rather and the, the model based on it. Again, cut and shut all over. So you end up with completed bricks, or as Pam would say, completed bricks. Okay, the economics of it. When I did this in 2015, you could get a Hornby clerestory for about nine quid. Or so. Looking recently, uh, the price seems to have gone up to 15. The first produced firsts, the break thirds, six of them between you will give you three eight compartment thirds, a six compartment break third, and one or two full breaks, and lots of bits for the stairs. In terms of time, the best I did, uh, working on a batch of four firsts, the easiest of conversion, 64 hours, 16 hours a quote. The more difficult ones, the, the, the thirds where you have to do a fair bit of cut and shut, you're probably looking at 25 of it. And if you're looking at a very difficult conversion, like the Native North, and that's about 35 of them. If there were only one of them ever built, I'll never have to do it again. Okay, lessons learned. If you're in the market for this kind of thing, the Hornby stock is much better than the older Pyat because the wheels and axles are not as crude. The triang ones, the axles are so thick and hard, they bust my Zuron cutter. Uh, the Hornby stock, you can actually uh, just simply substitute metal wheels, so it works a lot better. But the triang ones, you have to insert wheel bearings and the look to hold them in place. So those don't run as well as the Hornby. If necessary, check your sources and make sure you're not making a boo-boo. Because as soon as you do something, you'll find something on the net or in a book that shows you're actually wrong. Photographs for details and allow plenty drying time when you're doing this kind of thing. And again, batch production will make this a, a much more economical exercise in terms of time. Use jigs as necessary. Uh, for the roof and also for the grab there. At the end of this, I'll show you how I got around the problem of uh, Caledonian grab rails, which were just a pain in the tender uh, to manufacture exactly that kind of thing. And remember, you try something, it goes wrong. It's not a total disaster. Uh, you have what I call chick's law. If it doesn't work, you've also learned something. And that can be quite consoling when things have gone sadly wrong. You start again, roll up your sleeves, and off. Some processes will require to be repeated, particularly with the drop in tools. Uh, but again, time, patience, uh, it is worthwhile. A spares box, <laughs> I wish I had only one. I've got so many spares boxes, I can't find anything nowadays. Don't become obsessive as I did. I made 22 of these over the summer of 2015. Uh, but, but it is quite absorbing. And the other thing, if you are doing this, fit the carriage lighting before you do the painting and finding because they just bust up the street. Okay, so the coach is in action. There's the new rails Bachman 88 with some a converted Hornby stock on the layout. And here she comes for live. Beautiful model runs perfectly out of the box. And deserves some decent sources for one man. Coming the other way. 
we have a slightly longer frame. And some of those you'll recognize as well. And back at the other side of the layout. And there, my favorite shot of the class of 55. And seven, eight, one straining. And the final shot looking over at Shielded Mansions. The class 55 again. And coming the other way, a visitor from the North British with a couple of the Horn D6 wheelers, which are under scale length, and then a conversion, which I did myself. But you know, that's a story for another talk. And there you have it, gentlemen.